You know what guys, today I'm going to start this video a little differently. This is only Corsair's second ever gaming monitor, but just how good is their naming scheme? This is the 32 UHD 144, so we already know it's a 32 inch screen with a UHD or 4K resolution with a 144Hz refresh rate. Honestly, other monitor manufacturers really could learn a lot from the simplicity here. We do, however, need to find out if the screen itself is any good, so let's dive into the review. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and today we are back with a review of another Corsair monitor. This time around, Corsair has gone 4K with the Xenion 32 UHD144. This screen is packing an IPS panel, it's got Quantum Dot technology and HDR600 certification, and that comes with a price tag of £899.99 pence here in the UK. We're going to start things off with a look at the design of the 32UHD144, but if things are already looking a little bit familiar to you and maybe you've got a sense of deja vu, then that's probably because the 32UHD144 is almost identical in design to Corsair's 32QHD165, and that was their first ever gaming monitor that we reviewed last October. I definitely recommend checking out that review if you haven't already as it kind of will help set the scene for what we're going to talk about today but we will of course go over all the key points for the 32 UHD 144 in this video. Getting into it then we have to say the overall design is very understated and certainly a lot more understated than I thought we would see from a Corsair monitor. It's almost entirely plain black, there's no RGB, there's no gaudy design elements, and it's overall just very minimalistic. The stand is a bit more unique though. Personally, it's not to my taste as it is quite large, measuring about 46 centimeters across, and it's over 30 centimeters deep, but it is a solid chunk of metal that does add more of a premium feel to the design when the rest of the monitor is made mostly from plastic. Corsair has also kept its rapid route cable management feature, and this basically means there are four clips on the back of the stand which you can route your cables through and keep things nice and tidy. It's also worth saying at this point in the review, on the Corsair US website, you can actually get the 32UHD144 without the stand, and that will take $100 off the price. In the UK though, it doesn't look like this is currently offered, something I would personally like to see, as the VESA 100 mount makes it really easy to use your own monitor stand or mounting bracket. The ergonomics on offer from this stand are decent, though they are exactly the same as what we saw with the 32QHD165. That means we have up to 110mm of height adjustment, there's also 30 degrees of swivel both left and right, and then we also get tilt from 5 degrees downwards to 20 degrees upwards. That does mean we don't get any pivot or rotational functionality here, but for a monitor of this size, I'm really not sure how useful that would be to begin with. The 32UHD144 does offer a new and improved selection of ports compared to the 32QHD165, however. Video inputs include two HDMI 2.1 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4, as well as a USB-C that does support DP Alt mode. That same Type-C port does also offer power delivery so you could charge a laptop or a tablet, but only up to 15 watts, which is pretty weak. We can also see another Type-C port which feeds the two USB Type-A downstream ports, and you can also use this Type-C port to utilize the monitor's IQ functionality, which we'll discuss very shortly. Lastly, a small joystick is also positioned in the bottom left corner of the screen, and this simply controls the OSD with a power button above it. Speaking of the OSD, not much has changed from what we saw with the 32QHD165. It is a very clean looking menu system without any funky GUI elements that we sometimes see from other brands, and that does make it very clear and easy to navigate. There's still no shadow boost option though, or the ability to remap the joystick shortcuts, but it does have all the key image adjustment options we'd expect, 
and it is dead easy to navigate with that joystick. Lastly, it is also possible to adjust all of those monitor settings directly from your PC when using Corsair's IQ software. This simply provides all of the same settings you get from the OSD, but in software form, and you can also save different profiles and have them ready at a click of a mouse. That's basically it for the design of this screen though, so let's move on to talk about panel performance, starting off with our Spider X testing. Straight away then, we can see the benefit to the Quantum Dot technology with a super wide color gamut on show. We can see 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB coverage, as well as 95% coverage of the DCI P3 color space. Brightness levels are very solid as well. We saw a peak reading of 466.6 nits, which should honestly be enough for almost everybody. And just for reference, I typically use the screen at 60% brightness, which was comfortable for me. Contrast isn't great, however, with a peak of just 630 to 1, something we also observed with the 32 QHD 165. I have seen some reports that the Spider X units can underreport contrast but for an IPS panel, this was never going to be a particular high point. Color accuracy, however, is very impressive out of the box. This is usually a strong point for IPS panels, and before calibration, we can see an average delta E of just 0.83, with a maximum of 2.12. We were even able to increase this further once we'd calibrated the display, but honestly, I wouldn't say this was necessary for most gamers out there, due to the very strong out of the box performance. So we've established it is a color accurate panel with a very wide color gamut, but just how good is it for gaming? Well, this is where we're gonna bring in our response time testing, thanks to the open source response time tool as developed by Tech Team GB. The 32 UHD 144 has four different overdrive modes, as well as a dynamic setting, and we're gonna test all of those starting off at 144 hertz. So the first two modes are called normal and fast, but I'm actually gonna skim over these as they aren't really worth using. Both have pretty slow response times and they aren't really that different from each other. The faster mode though is where things get a bit more usable. There's only a tiny amount of overshoot introduced by this setting, which is almost not worth mentioning. And we can see an average gray to gray transition time of 8.17 milliseconds. It's definitely not awful, but it's not super fast. And we can see some particularly slow fall times from pure white shades, which is along the bottom row of the heat map. It's the fastest overdrive mode, which is the best of the lot though. Now, this one does introduce a little more overshoot, but none of the errors actually exceeded their target by more than 15%, so that is good to see. In practice, the overshoot was barely noticeable to my eye, and I am generally quite sensitive to color fringing. This mode brings the average gray to gray time to 6.89 milliseconds, which is a fairly respectable result. We are yet to see better from a 32 inch 4K 144Hz panel, and while it may not be as fast as some other screens we've tested, it is the best we've seen for this product class. There is one more overdrive setting in the OSD though, and that is the dynamic OD mode. And this is meant to act as a variable overdrive setting. And I have to say in practice, it does work well. We tested this at 60 Hertz, 120 Hertz and 144 Hertz. And in each instance, it does deliver good results. At 120 and 144 hertz, it uses the fastest setting, which offers the best response times with only a little bit of overshoot. While at 60 hertz, it appears to use a mode between normal and fast. This does offer slightly slower average response times at 8.22 milliseconds, but this is still 100% within the 60 hertz refresh window, so we have no problems recommending this mode at all. Taking a quick look at the relative performance then using the 32UHD 144's best result, which is from the fastest overdrive mode at 144Hz, we can see its response time of 6.89 milliseconds is decent. We do still need to test more screens so that this chart becomes a bit more conclusive, 
but compared to the Asus PG32UQ and the MSI MPG321URQD, which are both two direct competitors for this screen, it is the Corsair 32 UHD 144 that comes out on top, proving about one millisecond faster on average than that MSI display. So what exactly does this mean for real world gaming? Doing my testing with the dynamic OD mode engaged, I honestly found the 32 UHD 144 to be fast enough in most cases. Now, I'm hardly a competitive gamer, but I do like my Call of Duty and it was fine during my usage. I have tested screens with better response times, which gives motion clarity that's just a bit better, but I'd still say this Corsair screen is very usable and I wasn't looking at it thinking it was a blurry mess. For slower paced games as well, you do get the vivid, saturated colours from the Quantum Dot technology and that really does make a big difference. I personally love gaming at 4K resolution as well. For me, it is a big step up even over 1440p, especially when paired with a 32 inch screen size. It's also good to know that latency is no issue for the 32 UHD 144 as it's right in the ballpark of the other 4K 144Hz monitors that we have tested. Technically, it does have a slightly higher latency than the likes of the PG32UQ, but we're talking a difference of 0.3 milliseconds, which is certainly not perceptible to me. You may also be wondering about adaptive sync and officially the screen is certified for AMD FreeSync Premium and actually just yesterday at the time of filming Nvidia officially certified this screen as G-Sync compatible with their latest driver. I did all of my testing with an RTX 3090 and had absolutely no issues with G-Sync enabled. There was no weird flickering or anything like that so both users of AMD and Nvidia GPUs should be good to go. Likewise, viewing angles are absolutely fine. Now you do lose a little bit of the saturated appearance when viewing from an off-center angle, but I have seen much worse from other monitors and you could easily get a couple of people around this screen. Backlight bleed isn't really an issue either. I did notice just one small hotspot in the bottom right corner and there was an even smaller one in the bottom left, but this was barely visible at all during regular gameplay. Lastly then, we do also need to talk about HDR as this is a bit of a letdown area for me. So the 32 UHD 144 does have Display HDR 600 certification, but crucially, it only offers 16 edge lit zones for local dimming. This really does just make for a poor HDR experience as edge lit local dimming zones just cannot generate nearly enough contrast for a proper HDR viewing experience. There were even a few occasions where I noticed these LEDs turning on and off in higher contrast scenes. In fairness to Corsair though, the likes of the Asus PG32UQ and the MSI MPG321URQD, those are only HDR600 certified as well, so it's not like Corsair has massively dropped the ball in comparison to its competition. I would just say that at the price these monitors are coming in at, I really think the HDR just needs to be better across the board. Personally, I'd rather just use this screen in SDR mode as it will just look better, but for the money that's not acceptable and I really think we need to start seeing proper full array local dimming on this class of monitor. Overall then, Corsair Xenion 32 UHD 144 is another solid screen from the manufacturer. I would say that Corsair has probably played it a little bit safe with their first two gaming monitors, but there is still a lot to like here. That includes the punchy colours thanks to the Quantum Dot technology, the 144Hz refresh rate, and the response times are decent for this class. Factor in the two HDMI 2.1 ports as well, and I can see why anyone with a high-end gaming PC, as well as either a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, would be considering this screen. As for my criticisms then, these mainly come down to the weak HDR and relatively average response times. Both of those points can also be applied to the PG32UQ and the MPG321URQD as well though, so I actually think this entire segment 
of 32 inch 4K 144 hertz displays needs to get better. Right now, HDR 600 is just not good enough when these screens are priced around the 900 pound mark and neither are the response times. They're okay, but average at best. And I really would expect better than average for this price. If you are set on buying a 32 inch 4K 144Hz display though, of those three screens that I mentioned, I do actually think that the Corsair is the best of the lot, mainly due to the fact it does have the fastest response times. Still, the HDR implementations do need to get better across the board, and there is also definitely room for faster panels too. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review. If you liked it, do please toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts on this screen down in the comments below. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. We'd love to come chat with you over on our Discord server as well so you can find a link to that in the description. And while you're there, you can also check out a link to our merch store and you can even consider backing us on Patreon. That's going to do it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic4KitGuru and I'll see you in the next video.